Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome to our sales meeting, our Wednesday sales meeting, corporate sales meeting. Um, Jen's out of town, Rob's out of town, so you're stuck with me. And I'm even deep <laughs> Nice, thanks. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, wants and needs. Are there any wants and needs from anybody? Even online, speak up, unmute. Welcome. No? How about gratitude? You got any gratitude, Crystal? I love to gratitude. Um, this life right now. Okay. Right. Hey. Shoes. Drink water. Oh, I'm starting to but uh. We're not there yet. Okay. Okay, let's move on into the broker moment. If your client is moving into the state or out of the state, it's imperative that you ask them if they're working with a relocation company, because if that pops up later on, you know that you just lost like 70% of your commission. So, uh, and you have to uh, do proper documents and you have to do reportings to the relocation company and all kinds of stuff. So we've seen this come up where th that's, that happens. So that's why we bring it up. Um, make sure that you ask that question because if they are, see their company is moving them for free or giving them a lot of benefits. And so they're gonna wanna continue to use that relocation company. Um, we, do, uh, we do have a relocation specialist in Presidio. Um, and so if you have any questions on how that works, um, you can always reach out to her. Uh, if you're interested, you can, uh, reach out to me later and I get your contact information. Any questions on relocation companies? No. Okay. All right. Looking at uh, next week's education, we have um, looks like three, four, or three, four, five, seven hours of CE. Uh, next Wednesday sales meeting is um, from pain to power: how to shred emotional weight before it becomes too heavy. I probably won't attend that class, to be honest with you. That's not my thing. But um, yeah, no. And I don't want to learn how to shred emotional weight. So. Congratulations to last week's closers. We have 25 closings. Good job. Good job. Okay. Um, announcements. Let's start with Crystal. Hey guys, on Friday, we're going to Just Add Chocolate, and it's super fun because you get it out. Just Add Chocolate. Oh. It's at Traverse Mountain. It's up oh. there. Um, we're going to add our nuts and our fruit and we're going to make our bell. So it's a lot of fun. Um, don't wear like your cashmere sweater because you're probably going to get chocolate on it. But um, I want you guys to come and get to know the other agents. Um, it is a Pleasant Grove. Um, office event a fun Friday but um we want you guys to interact with each other so that you know who you're talking to and who you're who you can count on when you need to so I'd really like all of your participation come make chocolates with us and if okay. you're resting, you can lay it all on me because we all know I can't cook oh god uh 10 10 a.m we meet here uh here or there if you're meeting here be here at 9 45 if you're meeting there be there at 10. Okay, it should only take us like an hour and 15 minutes. We're gonna go. It's not 12. No, it, it's 10. Sorry, that's okay. That that may have been my error. Sorry, I don't, don't know how to get in there and change it. Um, it's a 10. We're going at 10. And um, so just so you guys have a like a an agenda, we have fun Fridays planned through August right now. Yeah. And we want participation. I want to see all of you there. And if not, I am so tenacious. I will text you, email you, show up at your door in my pajamas to get you there. So better start showing up to my events or I'm out. <laughs> and they're fun. They really are fun. Okay. The other one on here is the Women's Empowerment Seminar. Um, I don't think you say where that's at. Is that at the board? Yes. It's at your guys' office. That one says February 16th, 6 p.m. Men are not invited. 
Chris, I want you to go to your chocolate event Friday, just so you know. Don't show up at my door stepping in your pajamas. Pajamas and heels. And here, yeah, on April, we won't hear that. I'm going to go to the first colonies event, and then we'll have a panel speaker for their event that they're having Friday. Sometimes. Big chocolates, thank your beloved. I would free strike treats Maybe. instead, huh? Wow. Out there. Wow. Thanks for the club, Steve. Let's bring first colony up and uh, have them talk. Right. Yeah. Sharing section in the <laughs> <laughs> Principal actually asked me to talk about this today. So some of you I did share. <laughs> it's just a script, guys. Nothing like event related. Um, anyways, it's just a script for some of you if you want to use it on a social media post um, or do a reel based on it. So it just says higher interest rates are a good thing. Yes, you heard that right. Higher interest rates have helped to weed out some of the competition, meaning buyers now have more leverage in the market than they have the past few years. Contract negotiations have been nearly non-existent over the past couple of years. And with these market shifts, we're seeing sellers willing to contribute towards closing costs, temporary rate buy-downs, acceptance of contingent offers, home repairs, et cetera. However, interest rates are projected to go down. And as they do, the pool of buyers will open back up, meaning sellers will be less likely to, to negotiate the time to act is now. So if you want to use bits and pieces of this, please do in a social media post or reel, whatever. Um, I do have it in a digital version if you need it. Wow, I'm impressed. Can you teach um, what's his name from Elevate to talk that back? Yeah, oh yeah. My okay. God. That, I don't even think you took a breath. That's that's impressive. Yeah. Yep, yep. Really good. Okay, is anybody online from Elevate now that I'm bad mouthing you? Yeah. Nope. Okay, how about OBO? Is Grant online? All right. Security National. Come on up. Yeah. Just don't know what I don't know. Yeah. So, did you keep with um, the buyers so are 100% financing? Oh, I know. You're with Utah Housing. They have a whole bunch of changes coming out next week on the 14th, and I just kind of wanted to go over them a little bit. So if you're familiar with the score loan, that was the one that if they had lower scores, they could get a second that was 4% of the first mortgage. That is going away and getting better. It'll now just be a regular FHA loan and they can have a 6% second and the income limits will be increased. I believe they're going to go to 134100 where right now they're 89005 I believe is the current. So that all happens next week. Um, also, where the second mortgages used to be a rate that was 2% higher than the first mortgage, that has changed, and now they're only 1% higher. And then just a reminder, there is still the law enforcement grant. I double-checked this morning. I think there's 238 still out there. So you know, that's where you're, if they're law enforcement or corrections, they get a grant for 3.5%. So it covers their down payment. Mm -hmm. And then if they don't take the second mortgage, so the seller contributes to closing costs and they don't do the second mortgage, then the rate's reduced by a half a percent. And then also Utah Housing is doing away with their uh, 2 one buy down or their rate, it's going to a permanent rate buy down. So again, if the seller's willing to contribute or from that 6% second, it can also be used towards a permanent rate buy down. So they'll go up to a full 1% from the lot, from the, that day's interest rate when we're locking. So is that specific to Utah Housing? Yes, this is yeah. only Utah Housing. Think about something more fun. So they are doing away with their temporary buy down and going to a permanent rate item. Awesome. So as an example, I think I brought one here. They post it every day with their rate sheets. Um, this was from last week when we were a little late because we missed our exit. But just as an example, they have like every program on here and it'll tell you like if you wanted to do a full 1% buy down, uh, the home again program was 1.625 cost last week. So that's 1.625 of their loan amount. So again, 6% from their, their second mortgage can go towards that. Seller paid closing costs can go towards it. Um, I'm going to leave some flyers with you with a reminder for the um, 
law enforcement grant, and then some highlights on the changes that are coming next week. Is the law enforcement just a one-time deal? They've already used it. Can they use it again? You know, I would have to check. It doesn't specify. I don't know. That's that said. That, well, don't they do the new grant? Or you beat the grant? It's the same as it's been there. There's just 238 still left. I was afraid maybe because it's been out for a while, you guys might have thought it was gone. Okay, it's not. There are still some available. Then is your Utah housing? Sorry, I just need a refresher. It's the same as the rural housing? No, Utah housing has a conventional and FHA program. Okay. So totally separate from rural housing. Their 100% financing comes in two loans, but they're both 30 year fixed rate loans. Okay. Do you have any good things with the rural stuff right now? Okay. I'm just going to leave these fires here. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Deidre or myself. I don't know about you guys, but I love the, the Utah housing loans. I would put my own pitch in them. And that law enforcement grant, that's really a fabulous program, especially when they get the reduced interest rate if they're not using the second mortgage. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that's a fully forgivable grant. They have to live in the home like five years, but it is forgivable. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Jim. Dang it, I forgot your shakes. I'll be coming back down today. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, things are getting busy again, at least for us. So uh, uh, hopefully not back to where Things were scheduling out super crazy, but we're seeing at least just on the home inspection side of things. Um, oh, how do I say this? Um, we've gotten all, we went from last year where a lot of agents would say, try not to kill this deal. Just just tell us the basics. Just <laughs> that's, that's all you found? Come on, let's find some more stuff. <laughs> So, thank you. <laughs> yes, that's the market we're in. So, if you have those sorts of concerns, um, if you have those clients, the best advice I can give you is the more you know your client because you've been working with them, we met them for the first time. If you have a client that's a little picky or a little nervous, any of that information is great to pass along to the inspector because this. We're going to do the inspection the same way, but how do you communicate something to a seasoned investor, seasoned season investor, versus a first-time home buyer, single mom? That that discussion is very different. And if we know kind of their background and where they're coming from, um, probably the worst example or best example, I remember doing this house where even at doing this as long as I have the electrical in this house, even freaking me out. <laughs> and it was like, okay, how am I going to not freak out the buyer? And so I'm like, okay, there's a few electrical things, and I'm kind of like dancing around. And he's like, I've been an electrician for 50 years. I really don't care about the electric. We're not forced. Whole different discussion. Than what I, and so that that's that's what we're. So the more you can help us as inspectors to prepare the clients and have that better dialogue with them, it's going to make the whole experience much better. So cool. Thank you. All right. Are there any other of our preferred vendors online that I didn't see? I'm on here, Steve. It's Mandy with Take Care TC. Let's go ahead, Mandy. Hi, guys. Um, sorry I couldn't be there today. Um, I've got a funeral that I got to go to. So um, I'm with Take Care TC. I'm the manager. Um, our prices range from $99 to $399. Um, we do have a TC that covers all areas like St. George, Cedar City, Park City, and we also um, have one that does commercial. Um, you can visit our website to get more information at TakeCareTC.com, and we'd love to take great care of you. Thanks, Mandy. Thank you. Okay. If that's everybody. We will move on. All right, um, so we had our normal presenter um, drop out on us. I don't know why I didn't ask. Um, so <laughs> they asked me to fill in. Um, yeah, and that's why I'm teaching. But um, so keep in mind that as I go over this CMA slash listing presentation, this was my 
CMA slash listing presentation, how I did it. Okay. You all do not have my personality. Thank goodness. <laughs> and, but this worked for me. Okay. And so uh, just take the knowledge that I'm giving you and adjust it to how you would do things. Okay. Because the way you do things, I guarantee you the way I'm going to tell you how I did it, probably not going to be the same. Okay. Yeah, not even close. Yeah. So, um, okay, let's start out with my CMA. So I do not like fluff. Okay. I will not make a CMA that's all beautiful and presentable and fluffy. Okay. So I can give just the facts. So when I when I create a CMA, I will do the active listings, the sold listings, the under contract listings. Okay. And now the backup offer ones too, right? So when I do mine, I print out the full uh, the full client sheet. In fact, I don't even use that. I use the client um, uh, data sheet so that it shows any past price adjustments, that one on it. And um, I highlight like in, in yellow, all the things that are important to me to give to the client, the price, the days on market, you know, these kind of stuff. Um, on the sold sheet, it's, you know, how long did it take, what the DOM was. Um, just stuff like that. How many bedrooms, bath, square footages, the lot size, garage size. So I highlight these things on each of my sheets in different colors for active, under contract, and sold. Okay. Put them all together, um, like paper clip or so I don't like to staple those things and stick them in a presidio folder. And that's it. That's good for me. Can I ask okay. why you do actives? Yeah, because I want them to know what the competition is out there but and what their price is. It's worth more. Huh? Everybody always thinks they're half right. Yeah, and so um, souls are the facts, right? This is this is the facts right here. Put under contracts are the possibilities, but we don't know what they're actually under contract for. And active is the competition that's currently out there. Whether you think your house is overpriced or not, or whatever. Um, and I always do it in that order. I do sold under contract and then active in that order on purpose because I want to present them with the facts. And then here's your competition as we as I go through. Okay, just that's my CMA, and I'll get to where I present that. You use different color. I have different color highlighters. Yes, I do. That is as fancy as I can. Okay, I want to be able to. I want to be able to differentiate between sold, active, and contract. Okay, <laughs> sold are red. Just you know. All right, it's stop. It means red. It's stop. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, typically, I so I built my business on farming. I um, I didn't have a clue about farming back in two thousand one, end of two thousand, when I got my license. Uh, but my broker, um, we talked about it, and he said, well, "Why don't you try this?" And I said, "Well, what if I do this? And what if I do this?" So I I don't like door knocking. I won't go door knock because. Well, one, I don't trust people and I don't like people. And so I'm not going to go knock on their door because I don't want them doing it to me. Believe me, they don't want to come to my house. I, I got my ring doorbell. Okay, I got the ring doorbell that says, we're not here, go away. You know, and or something like that. Or no, well, sign on the right porch either because you ain't welcome. No, you're not. And so, um, <laughs> That's just me. That's my personality. So I'm not going to go do that to somebody else. And I wouldn't expect other people. Right? I would expect the same respect. Doesn't happen though. Um, that's again, this is my personality, right? This isn't you guys. This is me. So when I farm, I um, I did mailers. And I, so I did all kinds of mailers. When I was starting to get my business going, it was just listed postcards, just sold postcards, um, any announcement postcards, events, um, newsletters. And um, then we did um, the the congratulations letter when we sold a house that went out to all the neighbors. I wrote a nice recommendation letter, took it to closing, had my client sign it, then I mailed it out with no return address so that it seemed like it came from them, that kind of stuff, right? So when I would, um, and this was, I started out farming 400 houses, and then I grew to six, eight, and 12 as the years went by. But um, so... When I would get a lead or I would get uh, somebody to call me, um, they kind of already knew that I was working in the area. So it was kind of like a warm lead. Um, it wasn't it wasn't totally cold. So um, when I went in there, 
And I, I really didn't sell too much outside my farm unless it was a referral to somewhere else. And then I had to learn that area, that neighborhood. So uh, my point is that when I went to the appointment, I, I knew the area, I knew the neighborhood. I, I drove uh, or walked the whole neighborhood every time. And I knew exactly wh what house it was from a split entry to a two-story to a rambler to this, right? Now, remember, I'm okay, I just got out of law enforcement, okay? I was 11 years in law enforcement. I'm in real estate. I'm like, how am I going to do real estate? But I was flipping houses. That's why I got into real estate. And so my buddy's like, hey, why don't you get your license and then you don't have to pay my fee. And so I did that. And then um, unbeknownst to me, you got to make actually more money than that to survive. Um, so I jumped, I jumped in uh, full time. And so uh, I needed to make money. And when I would go to these appointments, um, I knew you had to be nice to people when you go to the appointments. And so I had my wife make up a $5 gift. Um, and she made it real pretty, right? Whatever. I took that with me and I knock on the door. I hand them my business card so they knew who I was. And generally, if, if obviously, if they know who I am, I'm, I'm still giving them a business card because I want them to have a business card because I, I bought those. I want to give those out and I want them to give them to somebody, right? If they need it. So I still give them a business card, hand them the gift. And I say, this is just a little thank you for having me over. I never brought that up ever again. Okay. And I competed against a lot of agents, um, sometimes three or four agents. And um, I, I got probably 90% of my appointments I got as a client, a listing. Um, that 10%, which annoyed the heck out of me, was because our personalities just didn't, didn't work. And it's probably a good thing that I didn't work with them because I, they were driving me crazy. So I me drive them crazy. But 90% of the time, um, the way I'm going to teach you how I did things, it it actually handled most of the objections that Rob was going through last week. So if you do your presentation and, and everything in a manner that you don't have to deal with all these objections that may come up. Okay. So um, Rob had a tough class last week. Anyway, let's leave it that. Don't go there. And, um, okay, so I knock on the door. I give him the gifts. I come in, I come in the home, okay? And immediately when I pulled up to the home, I uh, park in the front and never park in the driveway because nobody's gonna lock me in. And I noticed the front landscaping, the front of the house. And um, it's all about situational awareness, but not only for safety, but for um, doing my job. So as soon as I, as soon as I walk in the house, I notice everything from the door to the windows, how dirty the stuff, how, how the screens ripped, do they even have screens on the house? Does the how uh, does the need a new roof? Is the paint peeling because that's an FHA issue? And my mind starts working on everything as soon as I do my approach. So when I go in the house, I'm standing there. I have to be nice to some cat or dog that may come up to me because that's the worst. That's their pet. You're in their home, right? That's their family member. And as much as I don't want hair on my damn pants. I have to deal with it, can I? You, you, you don't. And so um, you'd be nice to the kids, okay? When they come up and give me something slobbery to handle, you just take it, okay? And so you have to change who you are to who your client wants you to be a lot of times, okay? So um, when they're super, yeah, you match their energy, I don't do that. It's not me. Hey, no, I don't match anybody's energy. This is my energy. This is about me. So when I walk in that house, who's in charge? Who's in charge when I walk in that house? Damn right, it's me. I'm in charge. Okay. And I let them know that I'm the professional and I'm the one in charge. Okay. And here's how I do it. So they say, Do you want to go over to the table? I say, No, I don't want to go over the table. But how about you give me a tour of your house? And in this tour, I want you to show me everything that you loved that you may have upgraded and that you're going to miss in this house okay and um i have my folder right in my hand turn my cell phone off because i don't want any distractions and then um they said okay where do you want to start i want you to start right here at the front door okay start telling me everything about the house okay and show me everything about the house so me i can take mental notes very well 
And so as I'm looking at everything they're doing, I'm not writing anything down because I don't need to. You may need to write things down, okay? So we start at that front living room. They usually open the closet. I notice the closet when um, then the front living room is usually right there. I'm taking mental notes of what the furniture is, what the pathways are like, how people are going to walk through here. Is there too much bulky furniture in the way that they don't need to have? Got to stay over here in camera. Are you nervous? <laughs> no, I'm not nervous. <laughs> I own this camera. Okay. <laughs> this is my room. Got it. Okay. So <laughs> once I once I take a mental note of that living room, um, we go into the kitchen. Okay. I take a mental note of the kitchen. What's the fridge like? Is there too many magnets? Is there too much crap on the front of the fridge? Is there stuff on top? Is there stuff on top of all the cabinets? Are there stupid birdhouses up on top of the cabinets that are so dusty? It's like, why do you even have those up there? Okay. Or plants that they can't reach that are fake or real or whatever. What's the countertop like? Is there a coffee pot, a toaster oven, a microwave? All this damn stuff all over the countertops that you can't even put stuff on the countertops to use it, right? So then as you go through the kitchen, then you generally go down the hallway, you see a bathroom. I look at the bathroom, okay? I look at the grout, I look at the sink, I look at the flooring, right? I look at the shower curtain or, or the glass doors. Do they have it covered with hard water stains, right? You take a mental note as you do this. You go into the bedroom, the same thing. Are the beds made? What kind of people are this? Is there, is there laundry on the floor? I've seen plenty of laundry. I'm like, <sighs> shaking my head. You had me come over to your house. You knew I was coming over here and you got underwear on the floor. You got clothes or whatever. That tells me that they didn't prepare. They didn't care enough to prepare for me to come over. They're not taking me seriously that they didn't clean up the house, right? So we go through the house. We go through the basement, okay? If there's a basement or we go upstairs, they're telling me everything. And when they're saying stuff that they upgraded, that they love, I'm complimenting them, okay? <laughs> right? Oh, that that BYU Y you have on the wall that is that is so ugly. You're gonna have to paint that. I will not compliment that. And yes, I've seen plenty of those. Okay, down in the basement in the man cave. I'm like, what are you thinking? But I don't say that out loud. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. How are you there? I'm like, you just. You just alienated half the people here because the other half are BYU fans. You can't have that kind of stuff in your man cave and expect to sell the house. That guy would not paint that wall, though. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I sold the house, but anyway. Um, so all these things, the laundry room, is the laundry room the only thing that's unfinished? Is there storage that's unfinished? And what's it look like? Is the storage neat? Is the basement finished even? And if it's not, is there crap all over the place, right, that I need to tell them how to organize and teach and all this kind of stuff? We go through the whole house. I'm complimenting them on the things that they like, they love, agreeing with them. And then um, we go back upstairs and say, okay, let's let's go sit down at the table now. Okay. So we go to the table now at this point, right? And um, I say, okay, let's talk about my CMA. And I break up my CMA. And they're sitting across from me. And I always say there because I won't do it with just one of the decision makers, right? They all both have to be there. One, I don't even want to go through a house with just a woman unless that's the situation that I have to be in. Um, and then I want her kids there. I want some other person there, right? That kind of stuff. Yeah, you're not getting in trouble. There's no way. That might hurt you. Table. I bring up the folder. I do it upside down. They're sitting there. I say, okay, let's talk about um, the sold homes. And I go, I start going through the comps and I go very slowly through these comps. I want them to look at these comps very detailed. Now, how many comps did I bring? Maybe there were 16 souls, right? I don't do that. I bring five, right? I bring the best five. And then- In each uh, category? Yeah, in each category. If I can, if I can, I bring it in each category. Color yes. And so um, the, the whole idea is, did I miss something in that walkthrough that isn't going to reflect in my CMA? Because if I did, then I'm going to have to bring it up at that point. You know, when I get to those, I'd say, okay, your house is going to be priced between this and this. However, because you have granite countertops that I didn't know about, we could probably add on a little bit more here. And because you did this, we can add on a little more. Or you don't have granite countertops 
and you don't have them in the rest. So we might not be at this top dollar. We might be more in the mid range type thing, right? So you have to make that mental adjustment on how your CMA is. And the reason why is because I've never been in a house before, right? I found that if I go to somebody's house and I do a preview and walk through of it uh, because they invited me over or they said, hey, come see this if we need to fix this and then they're ready. But generally, a lot of times they get screwed over and they go with somebody else because they already had somebody else in mind. They just want me to come tell them what to do because their agent was um, not crazy like you. Yep, those are all good, nice words. <laughs> they they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it, so they wanted me to come over, and then I still didn't get the listing. So I don't do that anymore. And so when I'm at the table, if I get a surprise, I make the adjustment there, right, or something. Um, and I always compliment, well, your your counter shops are so nice. That wasn't taking into consideration in this price. We didn't talk about it. But when I do set the appointment, I do ask them on the phone, okay, so tell me all about your upgrades that you have because I haven't been in your home yet. And I try to write all that stuff down in that first phone call so that when I'm making my CMA, then I know what to do, what to adjust for, right? Because even if you, even if I have to um, print pictures out of other homes that have full upgrades, I'll bring those colored pictures uh, to say, this home has this, and that's why it's priced at this. You know, my home's this. Sir. Uh, I used to. I used to have a, a flip presentation, too. I mean, I'm, I had old school. I was taught old school crap. Nope. Simplify. I don't do any of that stuff. Don't don't want it. I don't want a laptop in my hand in case I'm in some situation. And it's a parallel thing. But anyway, I just have the one folder, right? And so out of that presentation, I go through everything, okay? And I haven't talked about commissions. I don't talk about anything like that at this point. All I did was present to them this. And I asked some questions, and then I stopped talking, such as, what do you think, right, about anything? Well, what do you think? What do you think about this house? What do you think about how this house was priced compared to your house, right, this kind of stuff? Well, we didn't have enough under contracts for your Rambler, so here's a couple two stories in here, too. We're going to look at the square footage here, and then we're going to look at the, the price per square footage to see how it differentiated between these two styles of homes, because two stories usually get more money than Ramblers. But... The cheapest one is a split entry. Remember, I was in Kearns, right? I was in the nice part of Kearns. <laughs> you were the mayor. It was all the nice part. Yeah, no, it wasn't. But either way, my price point when I started, the average home there, split entries went for $150,000. And the nicer two-story homes went for like two twenty-five, two fifty. dollars By the time I left, and and how the market went up. We were there 22 years. We lived there. And prices jumped from that $150,000 split entry to like $350,000 for that same split entry. I was like, you're kidding me. So, yeah, I mean, it changed and everything like that. The reason why I picked my neighborhood to farm is because I wanted a lot of transactions. I wanted a lot of turnover. Um, yeah, it killed me going on office tour. I was with Remax. And we'd go on office tour weekly and I'd see all these five, six, seven hundred thousand dollar homes and the commissions they were getting. I'm like, damn, that's five of these houses over here, one over here. And I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to focus on what I've got here. And, and the reason why I did that was because I ended up having such a loyal farm that I sold the same house three to four different times. I can't tell you how many times because even the new buyers knew that I was that listing agent and when they wanted to move I got that house and then I got their kids homes I got grandkids homes I mean I built my whole business I probably made $120,000 just off farming every year from 2002 clear to 2008 so during that span I made that much money and then um, of course the market tanked right and then when I anyway when I started farming again back in about 2010 it just picked back up and, and prices were a little bit better and everything. And I still have the same client base because we still did events and we still did things that um, captured our past clients. The biggest mistake when I went into management. Yeah. Question on the chat says, how does one decide which area to farm? So that all depends on what your goals are. Okay, you could farm single family homes. You can farm town homes. You can farm um, all kinds of areas. You can farm luxury homes. You can do all kinds of things. But there's consequences to each one. Luxury homes take longer to sell, right? But you make more money. 
Uh, it, and it depends on the market you're in, right? Well, let's talk about today's market. Today's market's almost a balanced market back. So it almost equals out in my mind back in around 2003, four, five. And so I picked up um, a neighborhood that I lived in and knew, which was convenient. And um, I didn't have to go very far. I knew a lot of people when I taught the farming class, they would go to different areas and they have to know that area and become the professional in that area and really do a lot of legwork in that area um, so that people would know and trust them type thing. For me, I'm I'm waving. Um, well, my wife is. She would walk, go for walks. She waves to people. I just kind of nod my head, you know. And and but I always um, wore uh, uh, not a name tag, but a shirt that had Remax on it or whatever, right? So for city or whatever, I still do all that with all my stuff. And um, I ended up. Um, <laughs> So we 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 were a scouting family. Just go off a little bit. We were a sports family, and so uh, we put our kids when they were kids. We had six kids, right? We raised them all in Kearns, and sports was the way to get kids to stay out of trouble. And so um, we started with soccer because that's all they could do because they couldn't do football until they were eight. And so um, I hate soccer. I coach it. I coach soccer because. The volunteer parents that um, were attempting to coach soccer were horrible and didn't know what they were doing, didn't try to learn to know what they're doing or anything. So what do I do? I step in, right? And I'm like, hey, I'm going to coach. And um, I, I would think that we did better. We did practices and stuff like this, right? So the point is, don't get me going down that road. Um, I wore my, my shirt all the time. And so people knew. And so I, almost every year I had one or two clients that were from my soccer teams or from the sports teams that we did, right? I coached soccer. I ended up coaching football, water polo, high school volleyball, um, football um, for years, for 17 years. Took did all my kids through sports. One, yes, because I'm a control freak and I want something done correctly. But two, because I want to be part of their lives, right? And when you got six kids and 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 it sucks being a fan, I'll tell you, just sitting on the sideline watching. Oh, we did basketball, too. And um, and so watching somebody else do a crappy job is is like watching a brand new agent go to a listing appointment, and do a crappy job. It just drives me nuts. Right. So I got into management to teach and learn or to learn more about um, how to do real estate from a different perspective, but more to teach agents how to do this. Right. So at Remax, I became a corporate trainer going around all the different Remax offices, teaching real estate to brand new agents and things like that. And so um, when my career ended up going into management, right, my number one mistake that I did was I stopped being in touch with my farm and all my past clients. And I don't get one lead nowadays, nothing, zero, right? So because I don't sell, I haven't sold a house in three years except for my own stuff. But I forgot about all my past clients. Don't ever forget about your past clients. Don't just do that transaction and move forward. You've always got to be in touch with these people. Yeah, otherwise, they will move on. Wherever they're at, they're gone. That's my number one mistake. So don't ever do that. Okay. Um, so at the at the table, I'm done presenting my CMA to them, right? And I, and I would say, oh, what do you think the house should be priced at? Because I told them it should be priced between 480 and 520. So what do you think should we price that? And they'll be like, 600. <laughs> all right. And I'm like, okay, fair enough. Show me in all these documents where you're going to get 600,000. Who's got it listed for 600,000, whatever. This guy over here has got it listed for 590. And you wouldn't be above him. He's been on the market for 72 days. There's a reason why he hasn't been on the market. It's a nice home, right? So... Do you really want to be that guy? Do you want to be chasing the market down? Or do you want to be, I'd say, okay, then what, what is your motivation to sell? How fast do you need to be out of this house? Uh, we're not in a hurry. Okay, then if you want to play the chase the down market, that's up to you. I can do that. And in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to pick up buyers, right? That, I just shift my mindset. This home's not going to sell until we get to the right price. I'm going to pick up buyers, right? And then you aggressively market it so that you are taking buyer leads and buyer calls and stuff like this. And then I say, okay, if we price this home at this price, which I'm telling you is overpriced, you have to um, commit to me 
that in two weeks, if we don't have one showing or, or anything, that we're going to drop the price. And we're going to drop it by at least $10,000. And if they say no, I'm going to say, at that time, I'm going to end it. I'm going to say, okay, this is going to be a waste of my time. Right? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not going to be able to sell this house at this price. Nobody's going to. And you're just going to be wasting whoever's time that you get. And they're like, okay, well, hold on. You know, let's let's look at this. Usually I don't have that, that discussion, right? So sometimes when I feel like they want to be overpriced like that, um, I leave it there and I say, okay, here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to take you on a tour of your house. We're going to go redo the same tour. And I'm going to tell you what you need to fix and change. And we're going to showcase your home. And I want you to take notes. And so that when we go through this whole, your whole house, you're going to see everything that I'm talking about that may or may not need to be adjusted. And then we're going to come back to the table and we'll talk. They're like, okay, let's do it. Go back to the front. Okay. Back to the front. That's fun. Okay. Um, it's a dead show. Anyway, um, go to the front door. Okay. And if I have to go outside because I didn't like anything on the curb appeal, we're going outside. Okay. We, and if I have to tell them to adjust some of the paint peeling or anything like that, you need to mow the yard, you need to fix your, your flower bed, because curb appeal is the first thing that they're going to see when they pull up, right? Absolutely. Is the sidewalk uh, cracked or is it unlevel? Is the driveway doesn't need replaced? Whatever. I tell them directly, okay? You will need to do this, okay? Write a note down. And so when we get back to the, to the table later, we'll talk about all the different things that I said they need to do and see if they actually need to do it, right? Um, or if they have the money to do it, or if it can wait, or if money can go towards an in escrow account to fix it, or will that bother the mortgage company? All that's later. Okay, we start back at that closet, that front closet. I open up the closet and I say, okay, here's your closet. What do you see? And typically, what do you think somebody's going to say? When you open up a coat closet, what do they see? Coats, right? There's stuff in the closet, okay? So when I see a closet, I see three parts to a closet. There's the top, there's the middle, and there's the bottom. Can I see the back wall from any of those three sections? Yes or no? And I tell them, okay, so if I'm the buyer and I want to see how deep this closet is or how much room it is for them to picture their stuff in it, I need to be able to see the back wall in one of these three places. So middle generally it has all your coats or whatever in it. So we don't usually touch that unless you can thin out some of this stuff you're not wearing. But the top or the bottom, I need to be able to either see the floor and the back wall or I need to see the back wall on the top. So you're going to have to clean out this closet so that that happens. The reason why is because they need to see how big this is, okay? Now, we turn and go into the living room, okay? We go into the living room, and I say, okay, are you using this recliner? Does anybody usually sit in this recliner here? No. Okay, this recliner is blocking. You got a very narrow pathway that you guys have to walk in here. Do you entertain that many guests that you need 12 different couches and chairs and all this other stuff? No, not anymore. Will you be while we sell this house? And they're like, probably not. Okay, so then we can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. We can do this. Well, where am I going to put this stuff? Well, I'll tell you what. You have an unfinished basement. We can put it down there. You have a storage unit. That would be the preferred thing. Get it out of the house, put it in your storage unit because you're going to have to push yourself time anyway. That would go there. Well, we don't have the money for that. Okay, so then you have a bedroom. We can we can put stuff in an unused bedroom. I, I had a bedroom be so full of stuff, you can't even walk in there and see it. I hated it. But we still sold the house because the bedroom next to it was identical to that one and we could show. I think we need to put it somewhere. Okay, so we figure that out. You give them options or they already know in their head what they're going to have to do. So we're saying, okay, see the genealogy you have on your whole wall here? Okay. That's nice. You have a great family. Like, that's awesome. It has to go. <laughs> okay. You have to take it down and you have to fill in the nail holes and you have to repaint this wall. I only want to see a few pictures. There's, if you have this family picture here, that's great. You can leave that one up because I want people to see that you're a, a loving, beautiful family that takes care of your home. But the whole genealogy with everybody else is gone. Okay. Yeah. When we go into, so that's really the living room. Is the carpet good? Is the tab carpet? Whatever it is. It doesn't need stretch. Does it need cleaned? All that. It, do the walls need paint? Are they a smoking house? You know, that kind of stuff. All those things you have to consider and you tell them what they need to do. As we walk around, the, the corners, are they nicked up, right? These will need to be touched up, okay? Is there a hole in the wall anywhere that needs to be fixed and painted, right? 
So we go into the kitchen. Okay, the kitchen is one of the most important rooms in the house. Okay, I tell them you can have one appliance on your countertop. Okay, so if you're not using this every day, you're using this coffee maker every day, great, you can keep that. All the rest has to go somewhere else. One appliance per countertop, why? You need to show what it is. Yes, we need to create the illusion that it's bigger than it actually is. Okay, and a clean, clear, clutter free space is more presentable than something with crap all over it. Okay, so I tell them that this is, this is what each countertop has to have. And if the countertop has any chips, dings, and stuff like that, they may ask that to be repaired, be prepared for that. Okay, we turn to the fridge. Good old fridge. Fridge has magnets all up the front, it's got Kids' homework, paperwork, their B, C average, probably not on there. The A's are on there, right? I tell them, okay, all this has to go. You can have one side of your fridge, and that's not the side that's going to be seen. It's the side that's over here next to the cupboard. You get to put all your stuff on that side. The rest is clean. All this stuff on top of your fridge is gone. It has nothing on your, on your top of your fridge, and I don't go touch their fridge. I say, this needs to be cleaned off, dusted, whatever. Okay, on top of your cupboards, unless they go all the way, rise all the way to the ceiling, nothing can be up there. That cool Coca-Cola memorabilia you got all over there is gone, okay? I don't want people to be distracted by all your cool stuff um, and not think of the stuff that they could put in, in your home. So it needs to be clutter-free. And they're like, and the husband's like, I really uh, don't want to take that down. Uh, I really like to have my stuff up there. And I said, okay. Here's the saying that I want you to memorize, and I'm going to say it to you many times. There's a difference between living in a home and selling a home. And as I go through this home and tell you all these things to do, you can choose not to do it, but it's going to make it a little more difficult for you to sell your home. But remember, there's a difference between living in a home and selling a home. Okay. Open up the pantry, which I've already seen and I've already been prepared for. Wow, you guys are so organized. That is awesome. And I literally say that from the heart, if it is. Oh, because mine is. Right? <laughs> Mine is at my house, and that's what I expect. Oh, my wife is worse than me, which I love. I love it. You, you would think we're in a grocery store aisle when you open up our pantry. It's so organized. And there's crap everywhere. I'm just going to be like, oh my gosh. Okay, you need to straighten this up. This needs to be neat and organized. And thinking in my head, well, that's the way they are. So, how hard is that going to be for them to make those changes and adjustments? Right. And I already know the rest of the house, what it's going to look like, especially from closets, closets, people throw crap in that kind of stuff. Right. So, you know what you're dealing with. So you got to be prepared to soften the blow sometimes because you don't want to just offend them and you just, but you want to give them direction. Okay. So then uh, the kitchen, the kitchen sink, what it looks like open up underneath the kitchen sink. What does that disaster look like? Or is it nice and neat and clean and organized like my wife's? And so give them instruction on that, right? Okay, so anything else in the kitchen you can think about? Flooring, right? The tables, if they have one, one of the tables there. And so all that needs to be neat and organized and clean. Okay? And if you have a dog, there's always dog prints, right? It's the same one. Okay, we're not, well, we'll talk about pets here soon. Um, as soon as you walk into a home, you typically breathe in. You could tell if they've got pets right away. Okay. So if if they have a pet and say, okay, what is your plan for showings with your pet? Oh, well, Fluffy has to stay in the house because it's an inside cat. All right. Can you put it in a cage? And like I just offended the crap out of them. Yeah. Ask them to put it in a cat in a cage. No, but we'll put it in a bedroom. Okay, fine. We'll need a door, we'll need a sign on the door that says there's a cat inside, not to let the cat outside the house. But if they let it out of the bedroom, I don't want them to have to worry about chasing it, putting it back in the bedroom, let alone outside the house. So you need a plan for your pets. Okay. And I leave that on them. Let them worry about that because that's going to be out of my control, right? What, what they do with their pets or not. Okay. So then we go down the hall, talk about the hall, talk about more pictures on the wall. Yes. Okay. But like on the pet notion, um, what about if you have sellers that don't want to leave during showings? Oh, that's fine. So I tell them if you want to be in the house, if you want to be here during the showing, that's fine. You all will stay in one room and you will not follow them in the house, around the house. You will not give them a tour. Mm -hmm. If they ask ask you, if their agent or anybody asks you any questions, 
Give him short, simple answers. Don't disclose everything to him because you haven't provided them disclosures yet. And so you don't want to be doing a lot of talking to them. Just stay in one area. Go outside if it's nice and warm, whatever. Um, but yeah. And so that's usually Thanks. that's what I say. Yeah. And don't respond <laughs> through their camera because then they know. Because I've I've showed a home where then they ask a question I'm like, "Oh, I'll find out," and then the homeowner pipes in over the camera and tells me the answer. Like wow. that's a huge. Yeah. Wow. That didn't happen in my day. But Karen brings up a really good point. There's cameras everywhere in the house. You coach your clients way ahead of time before you get to the sidewalk because that front doorbell is going to pick everything up, right? I had yeah. an agent call me one time and was said that their sellers were so offended by what my buyers had said. Mm -hmm. My buyers didn't like the house, but they were not BYU fans, and there was BYU stuff all over. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Typical. I was like, "Sensing BYU fans." So just really, <laughs> your seller, yeah, your each yeah. not being listening. Yeah, well. do not be eavesdropping on people. I fell in love with just in one different location because I had sellers who could hear clear to the vehicles. Yeah, absolutely. Right down the sidewalk, so. Yeah, the cameras are a whole new ball game, right? And people have to be respectful. We have a we have a case right now going on where um, a family member uh, out on the front porch as they left the home said a derogatory comment about some of their decorations and their lifestyle. And the agent tried to diffuse and deflect it, right? But the listing agent and the seller thought that the, the buyer's agent was agreeing and kind of egging it on a little bit. And so they filed a complaint. And so that complaint right now is going all the way up to pro standards. Um, yeah. And it's going to set a precedence um, on certain things. And because it's an opinion and it wasn't the client's opinion or the agent's opinion, how is it going to happen? What's going to happen um, with how things move forward? Um, and this is at UAR right now. So just know that um, these little things make a big difference on camera. Okay. Okay. So when we walk down the hall, we talk about pictures, we talk about carpet, we talk about paint, um, we talk about baseboards. Okay, the condition of the baseboards, that kind of stuff. We go to a bathroom. Bathrooms are the most disgusting place in my life in somebody else's bathroom. You walk into that bathroom, right? Hopefully it's clean. Hopefully all around, because you got to look all around the toilet. You got to look all around the sink. You look all around the shower. Do they need to replace their caulking? You know, is it dripping? Is there stains in the sink? Is there makeup crap all over the place, the counter, and there's no place to do it? You, you got the same thing. You have to clean this up. You put it in the container, whatever it is, put it in the drawer, all this. And you have to give those hard conversations. That's your job is to give the hard conversation, okay? They don't want you to be wishy-washy. They really don't. Because that's why you're here as a third person is to have the tough conversations with them because they themselves apparently need that tough conversation, right? I'll be walking through the house with somebody and I'll say, this needs to be done. And the wife will turn to the husband and go, I told you that, he, you know, that was going to need to be done, right? <laughs> and I look at him and I just shrug and keep walking, right? But that happens all the time, right? Where they've already had these discussions of certain things need to be fixed or not, okay? So, yes. I was just going to say, I have a few agents. And so throw this out there, especially for newer agents that might feel a little uncomfortable having that hard discussion is I have agents who will text me and say, well, let's ask the home inspector because I'm going to be telling the buyer this is a problem or it's not. And so if you don't want to have that hard discussion with the seller, oh, let's see what a home inspector, you know, I've got a friend that's a home inspector. Let me see what he would say. Text me a picture. It's like, oh yeah, that's going to be a problem. That's his. Oh, that's a good idea. And it can kind of be. Uh, Thank you the yeah, what a great resource that would be to have on your team, your home inspector that you can just simply say, well, let's see what my inspector would say about this. And then hopefully he gets back to you before your appointment's over. Or if not, I will give you the answer right away as soon as he does, right? Because you don't want him to have to work on the hours you're working, nights, Sundays, whatever, okay? So I, I think that's a fantastic. I've never actually had any inspector offer that. So 
Nice job. Here, take a bow. Okay, so uh, do, do they need a new shower curtain, right? Those are cheap. Oh my Tell us. Yeah. I've had some um, clients reach out to me because of my seeking experience, and so we could do this for each other, but they didn't want to, it got pretty tense between them and their clients, and so they hired me to come in and be the bad guy, right. and so I did. I came with my clipboard, and I just, he knew that I was going to be there to point all these little things out, and yep. it works, so that is it. So, you do that for you. Staging, that means, because I was kind of confused on that, so when you say staging, you go in and just help them stage what they had. You're not bringing... Like I do want sure. to come in and do what Steve's doing with every little thing. I'm like, yeah, that that needs to be recopped or that needs to be like, sorry, that shower curtain is disgusting. You need to replace that. So I'll go through the whole house like he's doing it if it becomes a bad situation and you don't want to be that to your client, right? Um, and this is mostly for men. I'll just say I've had a lot of men agents reach out to me, and I'm the one that goes because they they don't like it. They're not good at it, whatever. And so I'm telling you, the woman, I'll just go to Instagram, and then I will. I'll say, okay, we're going to get rid of these pieces of furniture that we talked about, and how about we bring in like, a, and I'll bring a couple pillows for a flash of color or a throw or whatever to be that like we're doing. So I do add some moves. Okay. okay. If you're too close to the client and you say, you know, I'm going to bring in my stager and you should pay for that, right? It, that's a business expense. That's you're getting paid a decent amount on your listing, that kind of stuff. You should pay Kim's fee and then, then you see what discount you can get off. Kim Lewis is the best stager. So the whole anyway, thing. there you go. So there's a lot of people that can stage. Yeah. Like so, that but as an agent, right, I'm, I'm not a stager. This is just common sense to me, right? This is just what I would think you would have to do to sell your house. And, and I've sold a few houses. I've flipped a few, right? So, okay, when you're in the bathroom, do you have hard water stains on the glass, that kind of stuff? Teach them how to clean it off, that kind of thing, okay? And then you move on to the bedroom. Bedroom, Okay, beds have to be made every day. There can be no clothes. There can be no debris. Are we getting rid of more furniture that's in there? That kind of stuff. You go to the kids' room. Do they play with these toys anymore? No. Okay, let's take those out, right? And they're like, well, do they do they play with these toys? Yes, they play with these. Okay, great. We're not, they still have to live here and enjoy the home too. We're going to leave these toys, but everything needs to be picked up and cleaned up before the showings, okay? Remember, there's a difference between living at home and selling a home. And you go through the closet, same thing with that. Uh, you look at the lighting, you look at the ceiling, you look at the paint, you look at the carpet, you do all these with all the bedrooms, same thing that you do, okay? You give it all the same attention, master bedroom, master bath, same thing. Everything needs to be clean, nice, nice and tidy and orderly, um, that kind of stuff. Go down to the basement, right? Same exact scenario. How are the stairs, right? How's the handrail? How's the fingerprints on the walls or wherever? You, you have to tell them, okay, this will need to be painted. This will need to be cleaned. You'll need to do this. You'll need to tighten this. You, need, you may need new carpet on the stairs. This, this won't pass inspection, right? All this kind of stuff has to come from you. So when you're in the basement, is it a finished basement? Is it an unfinished basement, right? Two different conversations. Unfinished basement, open space, clean, right? That kind of stuff. How are the cracks that are bigger than a, a, the size of a quarter, the edge of a quarter, you know, those need to be filled, that kind of stuff. It won't pass inspection, that kind of stuff. It doesn't need a radon test at that point, right? Um, how How is the circulation, that kind of stuff. Those are the questions that people are going to get asked. If they don't know anything about radon with an unfinished basement, then you need to educate them. You need to tell them what a mitigation system is, right? And how it can be installed in here and this kind of stuff and how much it costs. Um, you can, I love that you can ask your inspector, right? What he thinks. Um and if there's no kids around and if they have a roommate or if they have somebody that they're renting a room to and there's a lock on it or something, hey, how can we get in and show this, right? Because that just complicates things, right? Okay, do you think they've ever smoked meth in your house? Yes or no, right? No. <laughs> Guess what? Okay. A test came back. Oh, somebody has smoked meth in your house. You're kidding me. And I'm thinking it's probably you. <laughs> yeah, I think I'll see you, but I can look at you. You're looking away from me when I talk to you. Your eyes are shifting. Anyway, you have to have hard conversations, that kind of stuff. The backyard, you go out into the backyard. How's the backyard look? Is there dogs? Is there crap all over the place? You need to clean everything up. 
Is there a deck? Does the deck need restaining or painting or replacing? What do you think about pre, uh, like pre-inspections? Because it's kind of like, mm -hmm. if you find some things, then they know about it, but maybe the buyer doesn't find that. But yeah. then, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just, it's about a disclosure issue. Absolutely. I do not like those. I don't want my seller to do a pre-inspection and find something, unless he's got the money to fix it and take care of it. I'd rather... They fill out their disclosures the way they fill it out. Okay. Then the buyer hires the inspector, right? They come out and do their job. If they have something they want to present to us, I'd rather go that way instead of, and maybe it's how it was when you couldn't sell a house is, hey, look, I've got a pre-appraisal. I've got a pre-inspection report here on the counter, that kind of stuff. This is a copy for you, but that's not the market we're in, right? So you make those adjustments and shit. I don't want to bring up any red flags just in case I don't need to, mm -hmm. you know? Yes. What do you do if meth is found in the home? What, what's that dialogue? Yeah. Okay, let's talk to meth real quick. Is, was it just smoke in the home or was it manufactured in the garage or the basement or somewhere? If it is found to be light enough to have just smoked it, right? So it goes into the heating system, the air conditioning system and all the vents. So you have to bring out somebody like meth mob, in fact, I don't know anybody else but Meth Mob. Um, and, and they will assess it as well. And then they clean out all the ducts and they clean out the furnace and they do all this cleaning. Then they retest it. And a lot of times, if it's only been smoked in the house, depends on how many times it's been smoked, that may be good enough. Okay. And, and it passes, right? If it's not, then, then yeah, you have a health hazard situation. And so that's not a fun conversation. That is not. And generally, generally, they're not the ones doing it, right? The sellers. Or it's maybe their rental property and somebody did it in their rental property. Yeah, this thing fully has to has to be fully mitigated. And then you get a price and it's gonna cost this and this many thousands of dollars. You have to take it off the market until it gets remitigated and cleaned up and fixed, whatever that's gonna entail. And then you can put it back on the market. No, you don't have to disclose it. Unless asked directly, you don't have to disclose it if you if you once you mitigated it, you do not have to openly disclose that there was meth smoked here unless somebody directly asks you, did you has there ever been meth smoke here and what was the test result? Then you have to be honest, yes. And we had it fully cleaned and mitigated, and we're moving forward. Feel free to take your own test. So roughly, how much is it to clean it up? So <laughs> So I want you to want you to install that on an inspector. Jason, I don't believe there's anything in the disclosures asking about Rayshon. Yeah, that's up to them to take a test and find it. But Matt, there is a specific question about Matt Gamble. And if there is now on Rayon, if you don't know, you don't know. Because like my house, I don't know. And I'm not going to do a test. They mitigated it. Yeah. We needed this. Well, there's generally a mitigation system in play. It's got to be to mitigate it. So, yeah, you, yeah, that's a good thing. You disclose that anyway. And then, yeah, it's on the disclosure. You can disclose that there's a radar mitigation system in the house and where the fan is and, and how the fan works and that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of times it's in the attic, sometimes it goes out of wall, that kind of stuff. So it, it's different. But yes, yeah, disclose, disclose, disclose is the best thing, right? So that's why I wouldn't do a pre-inspection because you may be disclosing and then alienating all those buyers, that kind of stuff. Okay, so once I've gone through and they've taken their notes and then we go back to the table, okay? And we're sitting down now and then I say, so what do you think? And I wait. I let them just chatter, 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 whether it's between both of them or this or that. And then maybe they'll get to a question to me and say, well, what do you think is the most important things to fix? And if they don't even ask me that question, I will say that. Okay, here's the most important things to fix that you're going to get a return on. Your kitchen and your bathrooms, okay? You definitely want to fix your carpeting, your paint, okay? Those are the things that are most important to fix, okay? Um, it, and it depends on the situation of the house and the condition of the house and all that kind of stuff, right? You don't want them to hold, go remodel the whole kitchen, that kind of stuff, just to try to get... $20,000 more, but it's going to cost them $15,000 to do that or more, right? It's not the case. 
you're not going to get 100% of remodel on a kitchen or a bathroom. You're, you may get between 70 and 80% off those two areas. The rest of the home, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to get anything for finishing that basement much at all. They barely count it because it's just sheetrock and wiring generally, right, in a basement with the walls and stuff like that. So you're not going to recoup a lot of this stuff. If they go finish the back landscape, they're not going to recoup that at all. Okay, they don't need to do that. I mean, there's so many unfinished backyards that I've sold before without sprinkler systems that people will just buy. They like the house, they'll do it themselves. Okay. And neutral colors. Yeah, definitely have neutral well, colors. They're living bright orange. Uh, yeah. I was like, no, 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 no. Was it Corey from Elevate? <laughs> wow. Okay. So they were back at the table. Okay. Now. How long, how much time do you think it's going to take you to do all these repairs? And do you want to get it on the market while you're doing these repairs at the same time? And we just have to disclose that you're doing these repairs. Or do you want to get it all done and then put it on the market? Well, what do you think, Steve? Well, I think you should get it all done before we put it on the market. But let's go ahead and sign this agreement now, right? And then we'll be able to do it, right? I wanted them to sign my listing agreement now so nobody else can come in and snake it from me, right? Which it had, which... They've invited me over to do all that, and then they go with their brother-in-law who sold two houses. I've been stabbed by that too. That hurts. Okay, but you just you're you know you're providing a service, and you move on. You learn and grow. Okay, so then once we're there, then that's when I wrap it up. Okay, let's let's do this. What price do you think it should be? And then we have that price discussion on well, I think it should be between here and here, and then generally at the top of that price range, I'm okay with that. Let's go there. But if they go above my price range, that's when I start to have the discussion of, okay, but in two weeks, if we don't get anything, and we'll know because we'll see how many pictures are being looked at and we'll see if we get any showings or any phone calls or anything like that. And so if we don't have any of that, then yes, you have to agree to, and I put it in writing in the listing agreement, client, you know, and I write it out, handwrite it in. Am I supposed to do that? No, no. I'm not. Have I done that because I was a broker? Yeah. I have, right? Um, you need an addendum, right? And you have to fill those kind of things out on an addendum. Not on the bottom of the contract where I see a lot of people doing, you know, 4% if I double side this type of thing and 5%, you're not supposed to add to the contract. So that's that's a no-no. Do an addendum, bring the addendum with you, right? Pretty simple. You can handwrite on an addendum. Yes. Go ahead. So what's the... What's the verbiage of the conversation when you're talking about, do you want to go ahead and fix things up before we get it listed or after? And let's go ahead and sign the contract now. What additional reasons can you give them for the benefit of signing right now? Like, what can you be working on while they're doing that that's going to be a benefit to them type thing? Or what's the benefit of signing now? Yeah, what yeah. can you um, for them? And so I was going to say, Okay, they said, well, we need to sign that. Why don't we sign later? Well, get on my market. And I have to get my photographer lined up. So as soon as you tell me we're ready to take pictures, we're going to do this. I have to get postcards going. I've got to get those. You know, I have to get all my marketing started to generate, and that's going to take a little bit of time. I don't tell them it can take me one day or two days or anything. I said, so uh, to avoid any delays in what my staff has to do, let's sign this now so that when you're ready to go, all I have to do is activate it on the MLS. And, you know, here you go. And by the way, here's an MLS exclusion form we have to fill out. Have one of those with you. I do, okay, in my folder, I have my documents on one side, my CMA on the other side. So I bring my documents with me and uh, do it that way. I would want to go back home and then resend them everything. If you have your laptop, sure, you can do it here. Here's an electronic version right now and be doing that. I, I like to be a little more prepared and I already have it printed and ready to go. Okay, sign this, right? That kind of stuff. Um, and get to have it pre-filled out, except for the MLS input, right? Because I might not know certain things. And they're like, okay, let's go. Then I, I'm ready to spend another hour and a half filling out all the forms, answering all the questions. If they want to walk through the house again, sometimes, uh, uh, honestly, my listing appointments have lasted between an hour to three hours, depending on a uh, paperwork. Uh, do all the paperwork. Well, yeah, I do have a sign in my yard or my car and they have a lockbox, right? How you want to handle the key situation? How you want to handle appointments? I need your name. I, I need your cell phone number. Make sure I have the right one. I need your email address. I need all these things. So you're, you're gathering all their information and data at the same time. Yeah. 
How many days before you have it listed on the MLS can you have a sign in the yard? One day. One day. Okay. Yep, one per in the yard. And you keep. Sellers too, we spend the contract to get all that work done. Yeah. You know, versus get if you walk it out. Absolutely. Now they're manipulated, right? If they can sign anything, I don't know when they're going to be there. They're constantly calling them mm -hmm. once a week or twice a week. And now I'm badgering them. You need me to come help with the paint? You know, that I don't do that, but you know what I'm saying? But you feel like you're going to lose out if you don't um, have that contract signed. You waste so, so much more time. Um, Absolutely. So going back to the CMA part of things. Do you um do you stick to like a mile? Do you do two miles? Like where depends on how many comps are within that mile. Okay. That kind of stuff. So if you don't have any comps, rural rural's tough. If if you don't have any comps at all, you're gonna go there and you're gonna be winging it and you're gonna end up saying, you know what, there are no comps for this. We're gonna have to get an appraisal out here and, and have them pay for the appraisal and just and just do it. Okay. Because they know, they know where they live and, and those kind of things. Right. So do you have a question? Yeah, so when you when you go in and you have them sign right there, do you say something in an addendum like we will list on the MLS at a certain time? You push plain language on an addendum. Absolutely. You still have to do the MLS exclusion form too? Yes, absolutely. If if it's not within 24 hours, you have to do an MLS exclusion MLS exclusion form. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? So yes. Speaking of verbiage and all that, so when you're writing in those addendums, do you, I feel like I'm a little bit lost and like all of a sudden I'm like an attorney and I'm like, this is, a, a, a thou shall, I'm like, I don't know. What? Yeah. 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 So your best bet is plain yes. language. Do not try to legalize it up. That's not your job. Just plain, simple language. Yeah. So they understand it and you understand it. Because when it comes to compliance, then we're going to understand it. As soon as you get too too crazy, Casey's going to say, Steve, what does this mean? I'm going to go, I have no idea. Let's call them. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, now we got to call and get clarification. So. Okay. Let's see. All right. Tyler. Brigham Young is disappointed in you, Steve. Oh, jeez. I'm okay with that. Tyler's question says, there's a question about radon and the seller disclosure hazardous conditions. With the exception of meth, are you aware of any past or present hazardous, hazardous conditions, substances, materials on the property, such as asbestos, lead paint, meth, gas, radon, uh, radioactive or toxic materials, right? So uh, a very storage tank, right? And then I do a ton of listing appraisals for agents. Can be great for presentation as well. And it's an older house and they had a bottle of mercury. Oh, shoot. Like a big bottle. And we had to call oh. the fire department to yeah. come and remove that. And they're like, well, should we just throw it? No, 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 no. Like, let's just call the fire department and have them come get it. But it doesn't look bad. But it is a hazardous material. Yeah, I didn't discover that. I've, I've done farms where we found dynamite. Oh. Sweated dynamite out in the shell. Wow. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, back off, everybody. We're not going to touch this. And we're already going, what's this? <laughs> See, you know what this is? <laughs> ah, sit down carefully. Sweated dynamite. Yeah, in a, anyway. So yeah, that has to be removed by professionals. And so if you find any of those things, it's best, uh, I gotta call my broker, right? Call us up and we're gonna give you the best advice we can, or we're gonna tell you, get out of that house. Yeah, run. Dan, what about the house you don't have to disclose that, do you? Unless you're asked directly? Yeah, exactly. Same thing, you don't have to, um, have the house get this stigmatism put on it from a death. Yeah. Hopefully the blood's cleaned up or whatever, but hopefully. Yeah. The neighbors will. I've walked through one where it wasn't where it wasn't and it was a vacant home. And I don't know if the I mean we walked down in the basement and you're just kind of looking around and you know as you're doing your show and oh look at the nice big windows, whatever. We go to the back room, open up there's like splatter stuff all over the floor. I'm like we need to leave right now. <laughs> so, 
It yeah. just had a weird feeling. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, I use. And I told the agent, I'm like, you need to have that home. Yep. Go to this um, meeting first colony is going to do. It talks about, you know, this kind of stuff. And when you uh, are meeting with your clients, another rule, good rule of thumb is this has happened to me. <laughs> Make sure that your clients know that when you have showings, things need to be put away. Don't leave in a hurry because you forgot the showing was happening. Yeah. And leave things out because. For one, you're going to look like the idiot that has those sex toys out on the bed. Um, you fit there. Okay. So, so she does bring up a good point that I that I didn't bring up. When we're at the table and we're talking about stuff, I say make sure that you put your valuables away. I don't want any weapons, jewelry, or anything out in the open. It all needs to be locked up safe or taken out of the house. And, and your medicines. That needs to be secure because people will steal medicine. Okay. The rest of that crap, don't go through their nightstands or whatever else. You know? Anyway. Um, so, again, the reason why, yeah, you know, yeah. So, the reason why I'm this direct and this forward is because I want them to know that I'm the professional and that I'm the one they should choose uh, for their listing and to be their client. Um, and I don't bring emotion into things because that's just me. It's all about facts for me. And this, you need to do this. There's a consequence if you don't do this. That's your choice, right? If you don't paint the walls or whatever, touch it up, you're going to get a less, less of an offer. And, and they'll ask you these questions and you can provide those answers to them. But um, for me, I, I'm not that party guy, as Crystal knows. I don't just gush like Jen does. I, I don't ever want to be that person. I just can't even see how she does it. But it works for her and it works for you guys. It works for who your personalities are to be who you are. Okay. For me, that works for me. I'm, it still does. I'm still direct, except for my wife. She it drives her nuts how direct I am. Well, yeah. But <laughs> it's who I am and I, I'm not going to change that. I, I thought at one point, honestly, this isn't therapy, but it's should I try to be who people want me to be? And it's like, hell no, I can't do that. That's fake and I'm not going to be fake. So, that's how I did all my listing presentations and everything. And I grew my business and it was, it was great. I loved it. People wanted to work with me. I wanted to work with them because they did what I instructed them they needed to do. Or if they did, I had to deal with the consequences or they had to deal with the consequences. But that's how real estate is, right? You just never know what's going to happen and what you're going to, what you're going to deal with. Being genuine to who you are, you can still share the same information in your own style. Mm -hmm. And it sends... Um, it sends a level of confidence. Like Steve, people see the confidence that he has and people want to work with confident people. You can still be warm and fuzzy if that's your personality, but you still have to be uh -huh. direct with what you're telling them yeah, right. Right? in your own way. of Exactly. To me, I can go on with somebody who's wishy-washy. In anything, it's like, you don't know what you're talking about. I can read right through you, right? That kind of stuff. So. Anyway, that's my listening presentation. Thanks for being you online. Thanks for your comment. Any other questions you guys have online? Tyler, you got anything for me? No. Uh, there was this question earlier about was was there a requirement for radon um, disclosure, and I was just pointing out that there is in Section 21. Um, the previous disclosures used to talk about um, stigmatized property with death, suicide, AIDS, meth, um, any stigmatized, like haunted houses and stuff like that. Um, and I actually was just reviewing the disclosure list and I didn't see anything about AIDS or suicide or anything like that. So they must have changed that in the most recent version. Okay, cool. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tana. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, Thank you.